As you guys know, I'm always harping on about targeting luxury clientele. However, moms with young children are not always willing to invest in something that they see as a luxury for themselves. However, many times parents will invest in a solution for their children. Today's guest is one of my Inspired Organizer students, Kathleen McGainch, whose mission is serving young moms who need tools to help raise their children in a structured home they can feel safe and empowered in. You're listening to the Pro Organizer Studio Podcast with Jen Obermeyer. Thank you for joining in. Jen makes it her mission to broaden the horizons of savvy businesswomen in the organizing industry by instilling confidence and inspiring authenticity. She is a devoted business coach and founder of the Inspired Organizer Program. Each week, you'll gain new insight into strategies designed specifically for professional organizers. And now, let's get started. I am so, so excited to have one of my own students on the podcast today, and her name is Kathleen McGainch. Hi, Kathleen. Hey, Jen. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. Okay. So tell everybody, tell us where you're located. Tell us just a little bit about your business, and then we'll jump right into it after that. Sure. So I'm located in Waterloo, Ontario, which is just about an hour and a half or so from uh, Toronto because most people are familiar with that city. Mm -hmm. And uh, so you inspired me to start my organizing business. (laughs) Yes. Um, You know, it was, uh, I, it was either um, like serendipity or maybe just a really strategically placed Facebook (laughs) ad. But um, I saw one of your videos on, you know, getting started with professional organizing. Um, I'm not naturally organized, but it's something that I learned and I've been really passionate about since I've learned how to, how to organize for my learning style. So I naturally wanted to start this business when she kind of gave me this uh, motivation to feel like, hey, this is an actual thing that I can do. So my focus is on busy moms that just want to spend more time with their kids and be able to enjoy their time in their home. Mm -hmm. So what I've been uh, focusing on is people within my area, within Waterloo, and uh, doing hands-on organizing. I've also started uh, doing do-it-yourself programs as well as virtual organizing. Wow. Okay. I'm super impressed. Now, if you don't mind me asking, because I know that in our audience, we not only have organizers who've been doing it full time forever. We have people who haven't even started yet that are just kind of exploring. And then we have people who are everywhere in between. So if you don't mind sharing, I would love for you to um, just talk a little bit about the fact that you're doing this as a side business right now. Yes. Yes, I am. That's right. Uh, So um, my career is actually in user experience. I don't want to go too much into it, but there's a lot of overlap between organizing and user experience. But yes, this is uh, my side hustle. And I actually work for a tech company that encourages entrepreneurship. So they love that. Yes. I'm very uh, blessed and lucky to be able to work for a company that supports me in that way. And I've been working in the tech industry for 10 years and uh, decided to shift my gears into my own business and it's professional organizing. That is so awesome. And I know that that is such an encouragement to the ladies out there who are wondering, like, you know, is it all or nothing? Like, am I going to have to quit my job just to even start the business? And, you know, one of the things that I'm always sharing and that Kathleen, Kathleen's uh, business is certainly an example of is that you can dip your toe in the water. You can do it during your available time and grow in that way, whether you intend to ever leave your full-time job or not, right? Like it's something, is this an outlet for your, um, your skills and, you know, your heart for serving other people? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I I will be honest though, there are days sometimes that (laughs) stressful. (laughs) Yes. It's not for the faint of heart, but it's for the committed, right? (laughs) Definitely. Um, I've kind of gone through the thought process of like, um, should I, just go 100% in on this thing. But then 
there's the other side of it where it's like, I love my career and I've mm-hmm. built this career. So, um, you know, I want to be able to have both. So uh, it really is something that you can do. But just like you said, uh, you have to be really uh, mindful of your time mm-hmm. and uh, making sure that you prioritize the things that are really important to you so that they actually get done. Like my family is the most important thing to me out of everything. So since I work full time, um, I usually will go to another family's home to help them with organizing during the weekend. Mm -hmm. So it's only like set to, you know, one day instead of two uh, during the weekend. So that like, you know, I make sure I have time with my family. Yeah. That's amazing. Okay. So yes, absolutely. Like part of me starting this podcast is that I wanted to provide a way to shine a spotlight on organizers like Kathleen who are out there, who are really, um, innovating or, um, you know, doing things to really mindfully impact their community. And so Kathleen shared with me before we um, scheduled this, and I would love for her to dive deeper into this, you know, what is her particular passion? Um, She mentioned working with families and moms. So Kathleen, I would love for you to talk a little bit about, um, you know, your, what you see your mission as, as a professional organizer in some of the unique ways that you're um, planning on going deeper into your niche? Yes, for sure. So, um, you know, I mentioned to you, I haven't always been organized. So my mission has, is basically to help young moms or moms that really struggle with this organization to help them be able to create an environment in their uh, in their home that their children feel safe in and is like well structured for them. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, I grew up. My parents were both very you know loving and caring, and uh, my mom was organized and my dad fairly organized. But yeah. the thing is, uh, my mom tried to to help me with organization, and it just didn't stick for me. Yeah, and. Um, that can really affect a child's self-esteem when you know they're trying to do something and they're basically kind of get labeled like messy Mm. or you know lazy forgetful that's a big one yeah yeah um when you know that's might not necessarily be what's really happening here maybe they have a different learning style Mm -hmm. so later on in my life i've realized i have uh, adhd and dyslexia so that's what was uh kind of making it difficult for me. So when I became a mom, I I still didn't know I had these things. I decided I wanted to try to get organized. So I was just doing it all on my own. Um, Because, you know, after being told for a long time that I'm kind of lazy and (laughs) and not very good with organizing, um, I kind of gave up. But I had my daughter, so I tried to get into it. But I still really struggled. And it wasn't until after I had... um, a house fire, which had nothing to do with this organization. It was just, you know, faulty wiring. Mm. I kind of looked at it like a fresh start. When I came into my home, wow. I wanted to create, just like I'm talking about uh, for, for that mission, a beautiful place where that's functional, that my family feels safe and happy in, mm-hmm. and that we can share like, and, and allow other people to come in and enjoy it with us. So I was just Googling, Googling, Googling interior design. And I ended up coming across someone, um, Alejandra Costello. Yes. Yes. That would be if somebody I'd be really interested to see on your podcast. She, she is on my celebrity uh, organizer list. So good, good suggestion. Yeah. So, but, you know, I had no idea about organizing. I was just thinking interior design. That's what I need. Anyway, so I came across her videos. They were so helpful. She built a lot of trust with me because she made a real impact on all the free content that she was giving me. I decided to make the investment in her course and she literally changed my life. Wow. Um, I went from, you know, just struggling to like get dinner on the table (laughs) at a decent time to being able to volunteer and, you know, invest in training so that I could better my career. Um, through organization alone, like yeah, I, that's a huge leap. Yeah, it's huge. So I, I say that because I realized it really unlocked all my talents, my hidden talents that I wasn't able mm-hmm. to to come out into the world. 
And I had my young daughter, so I taught her these things very from the very start, you know, helping her build routines, finding homes for things in her, in her room. And she is now like the most organized little girl you've ever seen. I love that. <laughs> yeah. So um, I just, it made me kind of look back and think like, what if I never learned those skills? You know, where would I be today? Or an even more powerful one is like, what if I had learned those skills earlier in my life? Like, how would it have affected me? Kathleen, that almost brings a little bit of tears to my eyes because I, I just wrote down what you said, learning how to be organized unlocked my hidden talents. And you know, that really well-known quote from, um, I think it's Walt Disney that says the great, our greatest natural resource is the minds of our children. Oh, I haven't heard that, but that sounds amazing. I mean, yeah, that's think great... about it. They're the ones who will be the future, right? And so when you combine those two thoughts, it's almost like, wow. You know, if, if simple like structure, routines, organizing skills are part of what unlocks our hidden talents, especially in kids, yes. I mean, that is that's almost like incomprehensible. Like when, you know, people brush off like, Oh, a professional organizer just, you know, move stuff around. No, like no, learning yeah. and being able to um, teach those skills, especially in a family where the kids um, are then changing their environment. Like you said, I mean, that is so impactful. Yeah. So, it's like changing. You it's know? amazing. It's like, amazing. You can look, um, you know, I'm sorry, I don't have the stats in front of me, but maybe your listeners can go Google it and check, check it out. But yeah. there are kind of some startling stat, uh, stats about um, people with learning disabilities that kind of struggle with uh, like executive functioning. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, so, you know, a lot of shame can be associated with that, which can end up coming out in things like uh, low self-esteem. You could start feelings, uh, you know, having mental health issues, maybe self-medicating with like alcohol and stuff like that like it can go down a bad path mm -hmm. and I know um you know it might be kind of far-fetched to make that connection I'm like hey we can organize people and save the world <laughs> but I do think it is a step in the right direction is that really far-fetched though I truly believe we're doing you know um life-changing work like you said Oh, okay. yeah, yeah. I need to change my mindset. <laughs> to Marie Kondo, she's like the life changing habit of tidying up, right? I, absolutely, absolutely. So, I love that you're taking your own story and, um, you know, in the true inspired organizer spirit, you know, are turning, you know, your, your passion and your expertise into a niche that is serving a very specific need. Um, in your community. So I'm just trying to like validate how wonderful it is and how grateful I am that, you know, you found this career and um, even as a side business are taking the time to pursue that and follow that dream. Oh, well, thank you so much, Jen. And like I say, you are a, a huge influence on me to be able to do that. And um, I want to talk a little bit about like my plans moving forward. I would so love to hear it. Yeah, so right now, you know, I've been focusing on revenue and like making an impact while also getting, you know, to, to prove that there's um, my company's viable. Mm -hmm. But now that I've kind of set that and have that understanding, um, I've decided just similar to what you do, you share tons of free content and make becoming a professional organizer accessible so that your people that you teach can become successful. And once they are, they could invest in your course if they want. And so this is the same approach I wanna take with organizing these skills. So mm -hmm. um, being able to make techniques that people can use to be able to improve like the flow in their home and making that free, making free courses. Now, the reason for it is because, like I say, I think it's such a critical like life skill and I'm going to invest my time to like give back in that way. And at the end of the day, my hope is that it's going to unlock that same potential that it did for me. And um, if they decide, you know, I actually want to do one on one coaching with Kathleen or mm -hmm. you know, have hands on help. Then that's absolutely. Great. Yeah. And you can you can help people from anywhere in the world, particularly when it comes to. Um, sort of 
assessing where they are and creating a customized plan for where they want to be, especially if they have any sense that like they could do it themselves if they just knew where to get started. Like, I think that's where um, a really big need for organizers um, exists that is not being fulfilled by a, a, a lot of professional organizers in the market um, is just that, that coaching aspect, which it sounds like would be ideal for you from a business standpoint and would really be amazing for them in getting started in their home. For sure. Yes. And, you know, um, kind of similar to you too, you're building community. Sometimes that's all it yeah. need is to have that. Uh, it's just like any uh, habit change, right? Like exercising and, and things like that. People have different things that motivate them. And sometimes having that human connection is what they need. to. Oh, to that, is, that is so true. So true. Having a social component to anything makes it a little bit more like doable or at least more fun, you know, to yeah. show up, show up and, you know, really dig in and, um, and do the work. And just to know that people are, um, traveling the same journey as you, even yeah. though they're, you know, far away, they're like close to you in terms of friends and, um, you know, life change at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. Be able to sort support each other throughout your journey, your organizing journey. Um, or like, I have this ridiculous little phrase, it's tidyopia. <laughs> Ooh, I have not heard that one before. <laughs> to tidyopia. Utopia. Like tidy utopia, yeah. I love that. Um, that's really good. So would that, maybe that could be the name of like your community? Oh, I like that. Yeah. This I is don't know. I just uh, was brainstorming one day. That term came out. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing with it, but yeah, that doesn't sound bad at all. Um, cause that sounds like a place that I want to be. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? for sure. yeah. That's so awesome. Also, um, I also want to talk to you just a little bit about the organizing styles that, uh, exist. I think that's awesome. Go ahead. Right. Yeah. So remember how I was telling you, um, I took that course with Alejandra Costello and what really resonated with me in her course was I learned about this idea of organizing styles. And it was the very first time I was introduced to something like that. And so she has three different organizing styles. And uh, she also talks about how different people may have different organizing styles. So you might have to do compromises. So that was something huge that I took away and never really let go of. I use it in my business life and I use it in my family life. So when I decided to start my business, I knew that was a key component I wanted to share with the world because I felt like that was an aha moment for me. So I decided to do a little bit more researching. Like, is this a real thing? Like, do other people talk about this? Is kind of like the questions I had in my head. And I ended up running across um, another organizer. Her name's uh, Cassandra Arson. She goes by Clutterbug. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm very familiar. Yes. So she has four different organizing styles that she talks about. And with my experience as a user experience designer, we use something called personas. It's like a made up person that has different characteristics for like the design that you're creating for them. So I've kind of combined all that. And essentially, I think it's like a spectrum. You know, I feel like it's very difficult to put people in these boxes. That makes a lot of sense, yeah. Yeah, it like depends on, where they, how often they use it, where it is in their home. But the three components that I see that being a spectrum for is uh, the visual, the component of it, the sorting or categorization component of it, and then the aesthetic component of it. So when we talk about visual, it's basically do they want to see their stuff or do they not want to see their stuff? And it's not just um, this or that. It, it's like on, a, um, on mm -hmm. a line. Like where do they fit on this line? It could even be in the middle, you know? And uh, then macro and micro organizing. Do they like to get really, really defined <laughs> with, with their little categories or more broad? Right. And then when we get into the aesthetics, like maybe that's how far they get. Maybe aesthetics are not important to them. Right. And then others, like they're not going to keep up with it unless it looks really beautiful and uniform. Mm -hmm. um, so to me, that I found that fascinating. Like I didn't make that connection for whatever reason and kind of learning that. And when I share it with other people, it's like I see them have that same 
uh, aha, like, oh, that's why he's the way he is. <laughs> or, you know, with the people that they're, they're living with and, and organizing with. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So that is a huge component of helping people, you know, with organizing is really understanding that, that, uh, that different styles, different learning styles and different ways that you organize. It doesn't necessarily need to be like a one size fits all, which sometimes you kind of get that impression when you're looking at magazines and things like that. Oh, totally. Yeah. I have so, I have so many different questions or comments I want to ask more about the organizing styles, but you know, one of the big things that just jumped out at me was, you know, for someone who is really high in the need for like an aesthetically pleasing, um, uh, environment or pantry or closet or whatever, you know, I find that it's not, it's not just a preference. It truly is like an emotional and mental need that, you know, other people might blow that off and say, oh, well, that's just, um, that's just kind of shallow or that's just kind of surface level. Like all you care about is how it looks, but like, Hey, for some people, that's truly the thing that is motivating to them. Um, that gives them that reward center to want to keep up the organizing and, um, and really implement it in their home. Yes, Jen. I, I love that. Like, yeah. and remember how I said there's that parallel to, to user experience. So yes. user experience is the design of, you know, apps and interfaces. Um, it actually goes beyond that to like just, an experience that someone's in. But um, Nielsen Norman Group actually, they're a research firm and they come up with like a diagram that kind of explains experience. And if you think of like an onion that has like a core, then another layer of skin and another one, the core is the utility. So that's like, is this useful? And you know, it's basically the idea of like, hey, having a male organizing system would be beneficial to me. Then there's the next core piece, which is the uh, usability. So that's, can I easily use this? And I think that's where it's like, is this functional for me? Like, do I need it to be like, you know, not have lids because I'm too, like, that's too much for me to actually maintain. Mm -hmm. And then the last piece, which is what you're talking about, is the desirability. It's like, I yes. like the way it looks. Yes. Like it causes that delight. And when we, you know, you teach a lot about the luxury um, organizing that's taking it to that like next level mm -hmm. and you know some people they love that and like that is the the clients that we want to serve with the luxury um, but for others sometimes that's enough like they don't even get to that desirability point just because that's not what they value they value more of the just being able to stay organized. Oh, I could not agree more. I could not agree more. And I, you know, totally believe that it is our job as organizers not to impose a certain way on people. Like, no, we're not going to go aesthetic. We're going to go just functionality and move on, you know, recognizing that for some clients, like, Hey, I really need to have all the matching containers, you know, and vice versa, of course, you know, not forcing the look the the popular look on people that are that's not a value to them. Yeah, it can sometimes break my heart when people see, like I love Instagram, I get so inspired yeah. by it, but it can be really intimidating too. For like, sure, yes. Even as a professional organizer, like, oh, sometimes my spaces don't look that nice at the end. And it's because, you know, we're using <laughs> um, like handwritten labels, you know, especially because yeah. I work with kids, I often like let them do the labeling. Yeah. It's like a different look, but hey, it works really well for them. And there you go. So it's just educating people on like, you know, it's not always just about the looks. I, this is such a good conversation. And I, you know, I, going back to one of the big things that you said at the beginning, this all ties back to not just the stuff, right? It's really a mental health service kind of that we're providing. Um, You're absolutely right. Yes. Yeah. And, you know, as I mentioned, like you can kind of go down one path, but when, what organizing does for you, it helps you be able to like weather those storms when they mm -hmm. happen. Like whether it's raining or shining, you're able to maintain your home at least because that should be your oasis. That should be your place, yes. your place that you can come and be yourself and know that everything you're going to be okay. 
And when you're coming home and you're having, you know, disar like arguments about where things are and you're losing things, that kind of makes home not feel as nice. Mm. Oh, yeah. yes. That's, that's a whole other podcast topic yeah. <laughs> talk about right there. Yeah. But um. just like you say, uh, like uh, that's something that um, I've been toying with too, is the idea of this catchphrase of like um, organizing is not just about the stuff. It is about your, your well-being. Mm. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I truly believe that. And I hope that that message becomes clear uh, to others that maybe aren't resonating with that so much right now. Mm -hmm. Kathleen, please tell everyone where they can find you and follow you and um, support you in your business. Oh, thanks so much, Jen. Well, I can be found on Instagram and Facebook. It's your organizer with a Z, even though I'm in Canada, we spell it differently. Oh, good. <laughs> good call for putting that detail out there. Cause I know we have listeners all over the world. <laughs> yeah. So I, I decided to go with a Z. So it's your organizer, Kathleen, all one word. Kathleen is with a K. Um, so just look that up and you'll find me on those social platforms. And I also have a website with a blog. So just your organizer, Kathleen.com. And from there, you would also be able to access my YouTube channel where I share different tips and tricks on all things organizing. Love it. And you have an ebook right now? Yes, I do. I put together an ebook. It's one of my first uh, attempts at trying to help make organizing accessible. So it's a free download. You can go on my website and download it if you want to check it out. And in that book, I start to explore this idea of um, these different organizing styles and, mm. you know putting different ideas together and building upon it. I love that. And I cannot wait to see your YouTube channel, Kathleen, and all the things that you're going to do with it. I love how clearly you're passionate about it. Obviously you're super knowledgeable and I love, you know, all the um, technical background that you bring to this, but above all, you're a really warm and compassionate person. And I know that that is going to resonate with people, not only local to you, but across the world, like you said, um, as they get to know you um, and receive value from what you're putting out there. So um, I hear you and I see you and I applaud you, Kathleen. I'm so glad that I am a part of your journey. Oh, thank you so much, Jen. <laughs> that is such a compliment, such an honor to hear. You just filled <laughs> my cup full of pride just now. Oh, good, good, good. <laughs> And you know, I owe tons of it to you. You're a wonderful coach. And I'm so glad that, you know, this, this role that you're in, business coach, helping others um, feel motivated and have the confidence to mm -hmm. go forward with it. Mm -hmm. Like that's, that's huge. So kudos to you too. Awesome. Well, I'm so glad we found each other in this yeah. crazy journey. Thank, Thank you so you. much for being on the podcast, Kathleen. This was so awesome. Guys, go follow your organizer, Kathleen. Um, like she said, Instagram, Facebook, um, connect with her in our podcast group. We now have a uh, free Facebook group just for podcast listeners um, so they can get notified about new episodes, kind of see who's coming up, um, chat with our guests about any follow-up questions, um, or just to reach out to her and say, hey, me too. I love this and this topic or um, X, Y, Z about what she's doing. So thanks again, Kathleen. Oh, I really enjoyed it. Thank <laughs> you so much for the opportunity. Thank you for listening to the Pro Organizer Studio podcast. If you'd like to learn more about time-saving services and resources for professional organizers, visit www.proorganizerstudio.com. And if you'd like to get Jen's roadmap to success for launching and growing your professional organizing business, go straight to www.poroadmap.com.